Hi everyone, welcome to MD VOD, your health live and on demand here on EmpowerMe.tv. I'm Dr. John Kennedy and today we're talking about congestive heart failure. Heart failure affects nearly 5 million Americans and roughly half a million people are diagnosed with heart failure each year. It's a very important disease to know because it's the leading cause of hospitalization and rehospitalization in people 65 and older. Congestive heart failure has many causes. The most common include high blood pressure and coronary artery disease, which can damage the heart muscle and decrease the heart's ability to pump blood to the brain and the rest of the body. As we do with every illness, we'll help you understand about the health of your heart. Today, we'll take a look at the risks of developing congestive heart failure, the common symptoms, how to make a diagnosis, and discuss treatments and therapies. Finally, we'll take a look at whether insurance covers costs. Today, we'll be joined by board-certified cardiologist and electrophysiologist, Dr. Kevin Campbell, who will help arm you with information to protect your heart. So stay tuned and learn about the anatomy of your heart and what happens to it when we develop congestive heart failure. Hi everyone, welcome back to MDVOD. Today, we're talking about congestive heart failure. In order to have a thorough understanding of any disease, it helps to know the anatomy. Congestive heart failure is caused by damage to the heart muscle. When the heart loses its ability to contract, the heart pumps blood backward into the lungs instead of forward to the brain and the rest of the body. As the heart becomes congested, fluid and water can build up in our abdomen and our legs. And this backup of congested fluid, known as edema, can occur from blocked or leaky heart valves, blocked arteries, or problems with the heart, heart's electrical system. And the weakened heart muscle can be irritable and vulnerable to abnormal heart rhythms known as arrhythmias. Some of these arrhythmias can cause sudden cardiac arrest and currently result in over 300,000 deaths annually. Make sure to stay tuned and learn more about congestive heart failure and sudden cardiac arrest when we're joined by board-certified cardiologist and electrophysiologist, Dr. Kevin Campbell. Hi everyone, welcome back to MDVOD, where today we're talking about congestive heart failure. And with us in the studio is Dr. Kevin Campbell, board-certified cardiologist and electrophysiologist. Dr. Campbell, thanks for coming. Thank you so much for having me, John. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks a lot. And, you know, what is congestive heart failure? Well, quite simply, congestive heart failure is when our heart itself is a pump, and when it is unable to pump blood forward, we develop congestive symptoms, such as fluid in the lungs, fluid in the legs. We become short of breath. Mm -hmm. And um, shortness of breath, um, difficulty breathing, um, that can be caused by asthma, that can be caused by pneumonia. Um, how, how, do you make, uh, how do you make the diagnosis? How do you know the difference? That's a great question. Uh, the most important thing we can do to make that diagnosis is to image the heart muscle itself and determine how well that heart muscle is pumping. Things like an echocardiogram or an ultrasound of the heart can give us a real clear indication of the heart function and in that case can help us make the diagnosis of congestive heart failure. Okay. So, um, Again, there, there are uh, special um, tests we can do uh, to help differentiate between, let's say, pneumonia and asthma and heart failure. Um, once the diagnosis is made, and let's say you've had an echocardiogram showing that the heart's not squeezing very well, um, and uh, your patient has a lot of swelling in their body from the backup of fluid and blood, um, what are some of the first medications you might use to help someone uh, feel less short of breath? Well, the best and most important thing we can do is use medicines that have been shown to increase uh, uh, the, your lifespan and decrease mortality with heart failure. One of the most important medications is a beta blocker, which is a medicine that helps the heart pump blood more efficiently and helps the muscle remodel and work better as a pump. Another medicine is called an ACE inhibitor. Again, it's a medicine that's been shown to make patients live longer with congestive heart failure. Again, it helps the heart muscle itself remodel and become more efficient. To get rid of the fluid we might see in the legs or in the abdomen or in the lungs themselves and create the shortness of breath, we use something called a diuretic. And these diuretics help us remove fluid from the body. 
So um, just to summarize, that's great uh, take-home advice. Um, sort of three parts to therapy uh, with heart failure. Um, we block the stress sort of response. We block the stress hormones, uh, uh, nord, uh, epinephrine, epinephrine with the beta blockers. Um, we improve forward blood flow. We put blood flow forward to the brain and the rest of the body with the ACE inhibitors. Right. We sort of provide the path of least resistance. And then we remove the fluid and pretty quickly we can get uh, patients feeling better and less short of breath with the diuretics. Is that pretty much it? Absolutely. It's really one of the cornerstones of therapy. And oftentimes we are able to manage patients from home who may call us with congestive heart failure symptoms by simply asking them to take more diuretic for a few days. And that's great because we may prevent those patients from coming to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And how does weight factor in uh, to all of this in terms of uh, managing a patient with congestive heart failure? That's another great question. Um, what I do with my patients who have congestive heart failures, I ask them to weigh themselves daily and to record those daily weights. That's way they can really track when they're starting to back up fluid and gain edema. They can call us and we can say, wow, you gained six pounds overnight we need to double your diuretic dose. And you know that's the, the big push here is for us to, to keep these patients out of the hospital and improve their quality of life. So in addition to uh, taking your medications, the medications that you mentioned, uh, and um, let's say exercising daily um, and weighing yourself, um, how important is salt in our diet if we have congestive heart failure? It is very essential that we monitor our salt intake when we have congestive heart failure. Salt can cause the body to retain fluid and it is very, very important that we limit salt intake in congestive heart failure because otherwise you're really working against the medications that have been given. Mm -hmm. So in, in, if you're on the typical medications, Dr. Campbell, um, that you would take for congestive heart failure, you're, you're, you're take, you, know, you're, uh, you have the right diet, you're exercising regularly, um, what are some of the more common side effects of some of those medications you mentioned? Sure, we have to monitor kidney function in particular because if we give people fluid tablets or a medication called a diuretic, oftentimes uh, we uh, put a, a large amount of stress on the kidneys to eliminate this fluid, so we monitor kidney function. The ACE inhibitor can also have some effects on the kidney. A beta blocker, which is a very important medicine in this uh, situation, can make people feel tired and actually can cause weight gain as well. Mm -hmm. And um, that's great advice. Um, uh, so let's say after you've titrated medications, you've been on maximum doses of all those medications, you're, you're, you're eating right, uh, you're avoiding salt in your diet. Um, what else can we do today uh, for patients with congestive heart failure? Well, we have some amazing technology that's out there now where we can actually implant a life-saving device known as an implantable cardioverter defibrillator or ICD that has a special uh, mechanism to resynchronize the heart. We take a weak pump, a weak heart muscle, and we are able to make it pump more efficiently by placing wires in strategic locations inside the heart muscle itself. I've had patients that actually were bed bound be able to get up and go to church and go to the grocery store and do things that we all take for granted. Mm -hmm. and, and these special uh, devices you're talking about, the, the ICDs, um, there are some that, some that are different than others. Can you talk a little bit about uh, how sure. those work for heart failure? So in the heart failure patient, an ICD uh, in the right heart failure patient will have three wires. One wire will be on the right side of the heart and one will wrap around onto the left side of the heart. A lot of these patients have a heart that beats out of sync, where the right comes in, then the left. We're able to resynchronize the heart by causing the heart to beat simultaneously right and left. Mm -hmm. So that's great. So, so they do two things. They, uh, they help us if uh, you have heart failure in a, in a, in a potentially fatal uh, arrhythmia. Um, they can shock your heart back into a regular rhythm, and they can, as Dr. Campbell uh, so simply and eloquently says, it, it resynchronizes the two pumping chambers on bot the bottom uh, of the heart uh, to help our heart pump more blood to the brain and the rest of the body. Um, that's great uh, take-home advice. Um, you know, uh, today uh, there's even better technology to the masses. Um, there's a, over 300,000 people that die suddenly uh, from sudden cardiac arrest. Can you tell us a little bit about what that is, sudden cardiac arrest? 
Absolutely. So it is uh, a problem in the U.S. today of epidemic proportions. Sudden cardiac death accounts for more deaths than all cancers combined. It is an incredible public health problem. Sudden death is when we have a fatal heart rhythm called ventricular fibrillation or ventricular tachycardia. The heart muscle beats erratically and the only thing that saves that patient's life is an electrical shock. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a sudden cardiac arrest. Um, uh, or sudden cardiac death. Um, most of the time, is it the same patient population? We're talking about the patients with congestive heart failure or is it a different population? It is a very similar population. Of the folks who have sudden cardiac death or arrest risk, heart failure patients account for two thirds of those mm -hmm. patients. Mm -hmm. These are patients who have weak heart muscles from having blockages in the heart, such as coronary artery disease. Maybe they have a weakened heart from valve problems or uh, other uh, infectious type illnesses. Mm -hmm. And um, my last question for you is, you know, who is at risk for heart failure uh, and coronary disease, high blood pressure? What, what patients do we have to worry about? What symptoms are we worried about? So certainly um, anyone who has high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, abnormal cholesterol, a sedentary lifestyle, uh, a family history, maybe mom, dad, brother, sister uh, may have had uh, coronary artery disease or heart attacks or heart failure. Those are the folks that we need to aggressively screen. We need to make sure that we take care of those patients in the office so that we can prevent these deaths in the appropriate patients. Mm -hmm. And do most people uh, that have um, uh, congestive heart failure, do they know uh, that they're at risk prior or do t people typically present to you um, at your hospital after an arrest or in congestive heart failure? As a specialist in sudden cardiac death and heart rhythm disorders, I often see the patients pretty far down the line. Mm -hmm. I, I really uh, see it as a crusade for, for us, and that's the importance of this show, uh, is to spread the word about risk for sudden cardiac death and, a, and, and increase awareness in the U.S. today. Mm -hmm. So that's a great take home point. Over 300,000 people die suddenly of this disease and you're at risk if you have high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, if you smoke or have a family history. So make sure you talk about this with your doctor. Um, one, of the, one of the most incredible new technology that's literally saving lives today, Dr. Campbell, um, and our people that come to you uh, are, are people that have been saved with an AED. Um, these AEDs are, are now uh, everywhere. Uh, they're on airplanes, they're in supermarkets, they're at uh, fitness clubs. Um, um, can you uh, take us through uh, how this uh, works and, and uh, how someone uh, might save someone's life? Absolutely. So this is an example, right, of, a, of, of an, an AED. AED. And this is available in lots of places, as you said. It's very easy to use. The machine talks Stay to you. Stay calm. Follow these voice instructions. Make sure 911 is called now. And it will tell you everything to do. Begin by exposing do. patient's bare chest and torso. Remove or cut clothing if needed. So we'll place the patches on the patient. And one thing to remember is that the patient, you cannot as a provider be shocked. You will not be shocked. The patient, uh, if they need to be shocked by the AED, it will advise you to move back. You stand back and the device will deliver the appropriate shock. So that's a, that's a great point. Um, these are literally saving lives. They're called AEDs. Uh, they're, they're, they're literally everywhere. And remember, this is a very safe device. Don't be afraid of it. Um, if someone arrests or falls and uh, collapses in front of you, look around. There, there are a lot of places and they can literally save lives. And it will not, as Dr. Campbell points out, it will not shock you. It'll tell you exactly how to take care of this, uh, this person that falls in front of you. Absolutely, and it saves lives. I want to thank uh, Dr. Kevin Campbell for sharing with us all this incredible information about congestive heart failure and sudden cardiac arrest. If you missed any of our day today's show, make sure to join us on MD VOD and stay tuned because up next on Apple A Day, we'll learn ways to prevent symptoms of congestive heart failure. As with any chronic illness, Heart failure is best controlled by early diagnosis and prevention. Sometimes we don't know the cause of heart failure, but in many cases, lifestyle is a major factor. And although there are many known causes, as I mentioned earlier, the two most common are coronary artery disease and high blood pressure. If you have coronary artery disease or high blood pressure, here's a prescription to decrease your risk. If you smoke, stop because we know smoking is a risk factor for heart disease. Exercise for at least 
30 minutes, five days a week. Get your cholesterol checked regularly and treat it if your doctor tells you it's elevated. And lose weight if you're overweight. And eat a diet low in fat and completely cut out trans fats and avoid foods high in sodium. Limit your intake of alcohol and control your diabetes. And make sure you take your medications prescribed by your doctor and follow up with your doctor for any regular visits. For coronary artery disease, you might also consult with a heart specialist or cardiologist who might recommend coronary heart surgery or an interventional procedure like a stent or angioplasty to help treat blocked or narrowed blood vessels. Also, some research suggests that a dietary supplement known as CoQ10 may help decrease hospitalizations and improve symptoms of shortness of breath and swelling. And additional research suggests that omega-3 fatty acids appear to reduce the risk of heart disease, particularly sudden cardiac arrest. So that's our show on congestive heart failure. Thank you so very much for joining us. And make sure to check out cdc.gov to learn more about congestive heart failure. Because the more you know, the healthier you will be with any condition. I hope you found this information about your heart helpful. I'm Dr. John Kennedy, and you're watching MD VOD, your health live and on demand here on EmpowerMe.tv. And don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and share us with your friends and family. And for any episodes you might have missed, they're now available on demand at EmpowerMe.tv's website and the YouTube channel. And be sure to leave us your comments and questions so that we can better help you with your disease. We'll see you next time on MDVOD. episodes you might have missed, they're available at the EmpowerBee.tv website and the YouTube channel. And be sure to leave us any comments and questions so that we can better help you deal with your disease. We'll see you next time on MDVOD.